This is the island of iOS 26. This is the island of the Harmony OS 5.1. And this is the island of the Hyper OS 3. I think even King Me would have to say, this is Apple. Is it Android? What, you say you can't tell the difference? Well, in this video, let's talk about why after using it, we have to give Hyper OS 3 a huge thumbs up. I believe this is the experience you should have after learning from iOS and integrating it with the Android platform. Evolution. First, the animation above shows HyperOS completely different approach. The app's window is thrown directly upwards, the mask shrinks to a capsule shape, the content switches, and it moves to the camera position. During this process, the app blurs and then clears. With this approach, the window animation curve can be fully adapted from the well-established desktop throwing method. You can think of it as a capsule-shaped desktop widget, which is actually the inertia curve of the throw and the capsule's return rebound. It completely eclipses all the Android masters. This is actually due to iOS's inhalation and expansion style requirements. The window twists with the hand throw and the complex inverted distortion feedback. Without this, the result is stiff and jerky. HyperOS 3 has taken a completely different approach. Clicking to expand the HyperOS selection directly transforms it into a rounded rectangle without shrinking. The expansion process is fast and visually consistent, with content quickly switching between blur and transparency. The same icon appears to expand seamlessly, but what makes it truly seamless is that HyperOS also incorporates a swipe down widget when expanding a card. iOS doesn't have widgets, so why did HyperOS come up with this? Furthermore, swiping up to exit the HyperOS widget seamlessly returns to the super window. The transitions between full screen window, widget, and super window are seamless. It would be even better if the focused notification card could seamlessly fly onto the island when the lock screen is unlocked. That would be incredible. From the experience above, I think HyperOS has figured it out. The main reason for Android's island isn't to obscure the small single hole cutout, where content doesn't need to expand through the cutout. Rather, it allows apps to be suspended in this area for a simplified display. The cutout is simply a display area. This breakthrough makes HyperOS display and operation more streamlined, allowing for multiple apps. HyperOS app still uses the iOS interface, with a separate sphere displaying two information states simultaneously. When displayed as a notification, the second HyperOS app transforms directly into a capsule, just like before. The capsule app shrinks seamlessly into a sphere, while the remaining icon on the left serving as the secondary display, also transforms into a sphere and merges into the capsule, shifting slightly to balance the left and right displays. HyperOS off-screen card expansion mechanism. Is it similar to Colors' Harmony OS where multiple cards expand all at once with a single tap? This is HyperOS cleverness. Expanding one card also expands another notification, eliminating the need for multiple unrelated cards to pop up simultaneously. When expanding a card to view detailed status, the circular area is perfectly utilized, displaying up to three states simultaneously and switching between them in one step. This smooth transition is impressive, and you've likely seen plenty of it since its launch. Horizontal swipes and super export also allow you to switch the number of displayed items. If I had to find a single flaw in the overall interface and animation, I'd argue that the retracted camera doesn't quite match the size of the Xiaomi 15's punch hole cutout. The entire transformation process, aside from the initial reveal of the camera's height, was truly astonishing. I'd give the overall logic and interaction design a pretty high rating. Next, regarding the polish of the details, how did HyperOS perform in the beta? First, the fixation issue that surprised me in the previous Harmony OS live streaming window which HyperOS delivered a perfect score on Android. The forced disappearance of the status bar is achieved through an animated contraction and expansion. This is unprecedented in the control center and backend, two frequently used scenarios, where the status bar is fixed. My jaw dropped when I discovered it. When did HyperOS become so detail-oriented? It locks in place when it should be fixed, and flexibly expands when it should be detached. Compared to competitors who simply copy the logic without paying attention to detail, it's incredibly superior. The system view only exits when swiping down from the negative one screen, which is a bit awkward in order to fully exit the page and the status bar simultaneously. 
This is the content displayed by the Super Guide. When there's too much black at the top of the screen in the capsule area, a translucent white frame pops up. In some system views, the corresponding colored border appears, green for not charging and verification code, purple for do not disturb, and red for silent, respectively. Currently, I've seen some third-party apps with blue Kainyao, a common feature on iOS. However, Android doesn't have borders that appear and disappear, which HyperOS has achieved. The press conference mentioned a custom narrow font to display more content. In my experience, the only use of the narrow font was in the taxi hailing scenario demonstrated at the press conference, where the vehicle number on the right was clearly visible. All other scenarios still use a regular font. Furthermore, for flash sales which have already launched, the only text on the right side displays the estimated delivery time. This is completely squeezed to one side, taking up a significant amount of space. To balance the two, a large blank space is left on the left, which is unsightly and wastes space. Adding a ball to the right side forces the text to shrink and fold the app to fit. This was HyperOS' biggest initial issue, which we'll discuss later. Regarding the local scenes, I think HyperOS has put a lot of effort into the design, with dynamic icons showing progress, charging status, and a flashlight, along with exquisite animations. The music waveform is still the standard Android fixed animation, but the expanded card has a dynamic ripple below the cover color, giving it a touch of Apple music. It blends beautifully with the black background, the countdown numbers jump, mimicking iOS's blurred page flipping. However, there's a noticeable border bug around the blurred edges. Full screen detail still doesn't display real time minutes and seconds, but a progress bar is now visible on the pause button, which updates even after the screen is off. However, it only updates continuously for 10 seconds and then updates every minute, following the clock. Well, I still think displaying a simplified version of the minutes and seconds is more reasonable and intuitive. Finally, the status bar obscures the display. When the Super Island is expanded, the status bar shifts slightly to the left or right to make way. Conflicting icons on the right quickly shift to the right to reduce the blur and fade out, while notification icons on the left also fade out. Unlike the Harmony OS Live window, which is usually long, the permanent countdown and music playback don't take up much space. The left side can be easily hidden, like other competitors, only when conflicts arise. HyperOS notifications are now invisible upon landing on the island, which is quite impressive and practical. So that's my experience with PengPai Super Island. If I praise it so much, it must be a fantastic experience. Well, the biggest issue with the current beta version is the sheer number of compatible apps. Compared to the experiences of competitors, which have been iterating for a year or two, it feels underwhelming. While I was working on the video, the official app scene has been fully updated. I can only hope that by the official release, it will support at least food delivery, navigation, and ride hailing on all platforms. For more fancy system scene islands, check out Colors. The super island I mentioned earlier boasts a design concept that draws on various approaches. I truly feel that Super Island is the best designed of all the similar Smart Island apps, bar none. With bug fixes and integrated features, this is a new breed of Smart Island experience, a perfect departure from its Android competitors. But don't rush into arguments. This conclusion only applies to the Super Island feature.